Hey everyone, Angus Wong here, and um, it's been a few weeks since I uploaded, so I hope that this video is gonna be useful to you guys. And for this video, it's going to be more of a talking piece. Um, I don't have a session to show you, so to speak. Um, but I think that this topic hasn't really been addressed. At least, no. At least it's not one that I see often. And that is, you know, besides looking at the specs of a refractor for astrophotography, what else should you look for? And I want to use this opportunity to talk about why I personally think the user experience it's probably more important than whatever specs or whatever glass that's in the refractor. And um, I want to note that this video and everything that I say applies only... <laughs> oh man, it's been a while. Um, applies only to refractor. By the way, you can probably tell what I think of this telescope by, you know, just knocking it over with my hand. With that being said, let's get going. So in this video, I'm mainly going to be comparing the Radian 61 against, well, I don't have it with me on the table because that telescope is currently on my mount. It's, uh, I left it because I'm already, I was already imaging from the night before. I'm not going to take it apart, unplug all the wires just to have a prop. Um, but I'm going to be comparing the Radian 61 against the William Optics Red Cat or the Space Cat 51. Um, I'm just using its bigger brother as a prop in the meantime to get me through this video. And the reason why I'm choosing to compare the two of them is because, well, um, between the Radian 61 and the William, Opti William Optics Space Cat or the Red Cat 51, they're both relatively comparable in price, size, portability, focal length, and, uh, and F-ratio. Um, they're, they're pretty much as close as it gets when it comes to having two refractors that are practically um, alternative to one another. And I'm gonna use the two of them to demonstrate why I think the user experience is probably one of the more important aspects that you guys should consider when you guys are choosing your next refractor. And I'll go into more detail about that. First and foremost, I think it's important that I talk about what I mean by the user experience. And when I say that, I'm no, I am in no way talking about the specs of whatever telescope that you're contemplating about. But instead, I'm talking about, well, the user experience. What you feel when you're using that instrument. Does it make you feel good? Do you enjoy using it? Is it sort of a pain to put together or, or disassemble? Um, and so just anything that goes within the realm of user experience. And that's really important because, you know, you can probably get the most impressive telescope in terms of specs, but if it's a nightmare to use for you, for whatever reason, I guarantee you that it doesn't matter if it's got FPL 99 glass, you're still not going to use it because it's, for whatever reason, is not fun to use. It is very similar to the way I feel about cars nowadays. Um, I will always drive my S2000, despite a lot of the newer cars having much more power, being much more capable than my S2000, because, well, I often find a lot of newer cars to be dull and boring. I don't care if it can blow the doors off of my S2000. I have more fun driving my S2000 than anything else that's on the market right now. So this video, it's only going to focus on the user experience of telescope. By the way, um, if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded for the past two to three weeks, well, I have a pretty good reason for that. Then so let me just show you real quick.
Hello. His name is Somnus, and um, I adopted a little kitty that was in desperate need of help. And so for the past two weeks or so, I've really been focused on just nursing him back to health. He was in really bad shape. Um, so, and uh, now he won't leave me alone. Uh, but anyways, his name is Somnus. And I have a little kitty now, but now you know why I've been gone for uh, for a couple of weeks. And uh, let's get back to the video. No, Somnus, don't attack the telescope. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna try to do this video with Somnus on the table uh, because. Otherwise, it was just gonna attack my 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 feet nonstop throughout the whole video. So, um, okay. So, I made a poll um, a while back. I think I put it on YouTube uh, on my channel or maybe on uh, Facebook, some some of those groups. And I asked you guys, you know, if you guys would be interested in seeing a negative review um, because. I don't like putting negative reviews um, on my channel uh, because I, you know, I want to associate positivity with this hobby. Um, but I'm glad that you guys responded and gave me a lot of confidence to go on with this video because uh, you guys thought that it would be important to, um, well, take a look at some of the bad things in astrophotography, particularly when it comes to expensive optical instruments such as refractors and a lot of that has to do with the fact that my experience with the the Radiant 61 hasn't really been positive um, as a matter of fact I don't know if you heard me say this in my original review of the Radiant 61 that this was the most annoying telescope I've ever used um, and instead of just bashing the telescope I think I want to use this video to, to go over why the user experience and compare it to another telescope that I've been using for a long time and why the user experience is, is important now that's not to say the William Optics cat series is perfect um, Trust me, there are some things about the William Optics CAT series that I don't like, particularly the uh, helical focuser of the CAT series. Now, I understand why William, Optic, why William Optics did that, because they want to make this uh, refractor as a dual purpose astrophotography uh, uh, instrument and uh, bird photography instrument. So it makes sense that to have a, a helical focuser for the you know for bird photography i'm just saying for pure astrophotography purposes i would have liked a uh, a normal rack and pinion because where the helical focuser is uh yes thank you thank you that's that's my thumb with a helical focuser um it's kind of difficult to make fine adjustment because you know your hands your your hands are going to be making big movements with the focuser and um, so I would have liked to see a normal rack and pinion focuser. Um, so when it comes to the user experience, let's talk about, okay. All right, so I gotta get this cat off the table because I thought it would be a better idea for him to not attack my feet, but now that he sees my hands, he wants to play with my hands. So I'll be back. Okay, buddy. Off the table you go. Okay. Okay. Let's try to let's try to do this again. Um, when it comes to the user experience, I now he's just attacking my feet. That's great. Uh, when it comes to the user experience, it's really important that the build quality of your very very expensive optical instrument is top notch because you know these refractors 
it doesn't take a whole lot for these refractors to reach like a thousand dollars um so and you're one you're probably wondering why i have a towel underneath the radian 61 it is because let me show you that's why i have a towel underneath the radian 61 and on top of that i think i mentioned this in my original review The dew shield is quite loose on this telescope. And I'm bringing that up because while it does not impact the image that you get out of it, it does impact the way it feels. You know, you're spending a thousand, like close to a thousand dollars, if not more, and you have a loose feeling dew shield and your lens cap actually comes off. And I bring up the I, I bring up the lens cap because I've taken this a few times to a dark site in my backpack, um, and during just simple act of laying my backpack down and driving it to a dark site, not once did this lens cap stay on within the backpack, just you know due to the natural movement of driving a car or, and, and carrying it out onto a dark site. So. I, that's why I brought up the, uh, the build quality because it's very important. Now, compare that to the William Optics uh, CAT series. I, I think most of us would agree that there's hardly ever a build quality issue. Um, at least I've never experienced any between both the 51 and the 71. And as a matter of fact, even the GT81 that I have. So I think when you're spending that amount of money, yeah, build quality matters. Now I actually want to talk about the actual handling of these telescopes. And again, this is this is important to me because you know if I'm holding on to what is essentially a thousand dollars in my hand this better have a good way and a secure way for me to hold on to and transport it now this might be because i don't have the largest hands in the world but i kind of think that when it comes to designing the radian 61 um it doesn't feel all that secure in my hands because of these of these of these uh, rings and you know this telescope is already pretty tiny and these rings are massive and the fact that there's two of them there's no good way for me to pick up this telescope i don't want to pick it up by the field flattener i don't want to pick it up by the focuser i'm definitely not going to pick it up by the already loose dew shield my hand doesn't really fit well around the rings it's not secure for me so the only real place that i could actually grasp onto the telescope is the small area between the rings and i kind of have to do this like like claw finger thing to just pick it up now in stock form this doesn't come with a handle this handle is, is an add-on by me but you're probably wondering well the wim optics red cat or space cat 51 stock doesn't come with a handle either but that telescope, it's much easier to handle and pick up um, just because it doesn't have these massive rings taking up all the real estate left on the telescope. So, you know, if I'm, if I am going to essentially hold a thousand dollars in my hands, it better be easy for me to pick up. The next thing I want to talk about and this is probably the main, yeah. The next two are going to be the main reasons why I've called the Radian 61 to be the most annoying telescope I have ever used. And I'm not even talking, talking about the fact that it's using undisclosed optics and it's got obvious 
uh, chromatic aberration in my own in my very own testing. But you know that's coming down to the specs. I'm not. That's not the point of this video. I want to focus this video on the user experience. Um, and this, like this, no matter what specs is in the refractor. Like I said, I don't care if this comes when. I don't care if this comes with FPL 99 and you know, like like a like a true Petswell design, like the William Optics Cat series. This is where I don't have any joy in using the refractor. It is because of the way the filter drawer is designed. Now it's great that they're including a filter drawer with the Radian 61, but this cannot be any worse of a design because you probably can't see on the video, but right here, this is essentially where the filter is going to screw onto and, and, uh, and be sort of part of the optical system. But the problem with that is that this opening, it's relatively narrow and how deep this is. Can you imagine getting your finger in here to remove and screw on a filter in a dark site, middle of nowhere where you can't, where visibility is already limited. And like I said, like it's this deep, right? Now compare that to the William Optics Cat series. They also have a filter drawer. Now I understand that this is two completely different optical design and it's really the pet spell design that allows William Optics to have a filter drawer to be designed like this because the essentially the, the field flattener portion of the glass is built into the telescope. Whereas the Radian 61 is not, it's just a typical field flattener that's built in, uh, that's built onto the back of the telescope. And you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is so simple. This is the filter drawer. The filter goes on, goes in here. You have all the room to access your filter and you don't have to worry about smudging it up because you don't have to like dig your finger into here to remove or, uh, apply your favorite filter. Now, you're probably wondering, well, other field flattener have the same design as the one that comes with the Radiant 61. And you're right. However, my problem with the Radiant 61 field flattener is how deep the filter has to go compared to a typical field flattener from say William Optics. I can't do this with both hands, but like this is where the filter sits. I only have to insert my finger like about the depth of my fingernail to secure and remove my filter. Compare that to the Radiant 61 and how deep the filter have to go in. Again, I don't want to do this in the middle of nowhere at a dark site. So this is where, this is why I say this is probably one of the most annoying telescope I've ever used. And again, this has nothing to do with the specs of the telescope. It's just a user experience that I don't enjoy whatsoever. And it's really because of this one exercise, the fact that applying and removing filter is so difficult that it makes me not want to use this telescope. And for a telescope that was designed for astrophotography in mind, and when it comes to astrophotography, you're going to be switching and applying filters left and right. This is a horrible design. That brings me to the second portion of this field flattener, the way that it was designed. And it is the, um, 
the field rotator or the image rotator that is built onto, the onto this uh, filter drawer. Once again, I am glad that they included that. And I'm not even going to talk about the fact that for about $1,000, the image rotator is not graduated, is not marked. There's no numerical marking on here to tell you uh, where 90 degrees is, where 30 degrees is, where 180 degrees is. But what makes this such a pain to use is the locking and unlocking mechanism of the image rotator. It is secure by three flathead screwdrivers. So, honestly, if you are going to a dark site and you forgot to bring a flathead screwdriver, guess what? You don't have a way to change the orientation of your image. You don't have a way to change the way that you want to frame your images because it's blocked by, a, by three screws that uses a uh, flathead screwdriver. I don't understand why they had to use three flathead screwdrivers when other telescope simply uses a, I, I don't know what you call this, this is a thumb screw I guess, and you can unlock and lock it with your thumb and then you can rotate, you can rotate the image rotator. Um, so this thing back here is the reason why I think user experience is so important when it comes to picking your next refractor and quite honestly is the reason why I cannot and will not ever recommend the Radian 61 to be your next telescope. I don't even care about the fact that it's got some deceptive marketing and that it doesn't tell you what kind of glass it's using and it's got obvious chromatic aberration. But is the user experience of the Radian 61 that makes me not want to use it ever again. I don't care about I don't care about how the do shield comes off. I don't care about the loose do shield. By the way, I'm sorry, I meant the lens cap. I don't care about the loose do shield. I don't care about the ergonomics of the telescope. Again, maybe I just have small hands, so who knows. But I don't appreciate the, the lack of ergonomics and the fact that I'm gonna have $1,000 worth of optical instrument in my hands. And this final piece right here, this filter drawer slash image rotator, this piece alone, I think this piece alone is the failure part of this telescope which was designed to be an astrophotography telescope. So I hope that you found this useful. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but man, talking about this telescope just makes me mad. Um, and what's the reason why I didn't want to make a video like this because I, I want to make pleasant content. Um, I want to get more people into the hobby, but I guess that it's also important for me to talk about things to, uh, to help you guys decide how to pick and choose your next telescope. So, you know, using the Radian 61 as an example, don't just look at the specs. Um, look up user experience. Ask people what they think of the telescope that you're interested in. Ask them if there are any annoying tendencies or annoying habits or, you know, what 
parts of a telescope tends to fail. Um, and so with that being said, this is a thousand dollars and the user experience honestly does not match up to a thousand dollars worth of optical instrument. So I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I'm going to end this video right now because the, <laughs> the more I talk about the Radian 61, the angrier I feel. So um, that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. And um, I hope that you guys have been well. I know I've been away for about a week or two. So um, anyways, I'll see you guys. Take care and uh, clear skies. And I wish you all good health. Bye.